Hi Steve here, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Laughing Stoic and this week we're going to talk a bit about how to install Stoic software into your head. So if you're interested in Stoicism and you think you might want to give it a go, this is sort of approach that might help and uh, allow you to have a look at the world from a Stoic viewpoint uh, and see if you really like it or not. Um, you can always uninstall it as they say. So Stoicism is more of a way in terms of philosophy rather than uh, very belief oriented. So what I'd suggest you do if you're interested in approaching life from this way is to look first at Stoic virtues. Uh, these are courage, temperance, justice and wisdom. Uh, interestingly these are also the four cardinal virtues of Catholicism. So if you're Catholic, you probably don't have to worry about it too much, you already have installed them. <laughs> but if you're not, or you haven't thought about these things very much, it is worth taking a bit of time to kind of decide whether these virtues work for you. Um, you can always be not virtuous, lots of us are, but adopting virtue is not insignificant, and you need to think about what each of those virtues are. They all kind of cover different parts of life. Uh, and each of them has its own values and merits and they fit together as a whole and I think most people who've thought about it, Marcus Aurelius particularly, would say that if you're going to have four virtues uh, these would be top of his list and uh, Thomas Aquinas, who was a saint, seems to have agreed with him. So have a look at the virtues, think about what it means to you to be courageous. I think temperate is one that takes a little bit of time to think about Temperate meaning sort of moderation. So you can think about it in terms of quantity, you don't eat too much food, don't take too much uh, that you don't need, don't go around building yourself sort of giant houses full of rooms you don't use, uh, or hosting immodest parties perhaps. But also at the other end of the spectrum, not just being you know, deliberately humble and uh, refusing favor because you just want to show how uh, earnest you are. Uh, temperance is somewhere in the middle. I think that temperance also applies, as in the French, TEMP, T-E-M-P, that it applies to a sort of pace. And I think in some ways that pacing is even more valuable than a quantity version of temperance. So pacing yourself through life, pacing yourself through the day, not rushing things unnecessarily, nor being tardy, keeping time with the pace of your own ability to uh, do things or think about them or reflect on them and keeping in pace with the natural way that life presents things to you in a certain sort of order and timing and trying to make those match up your internal pace around a particular thing and the pace of life and these paces of course change at different times of your life and it's a question of being able to adjust your pace to the circumstances. So I think temperance deserves a good lot of thinking and reflection on Justice is a very complicated concept in Stoicism and as I said previously it's kind of for a start more like natural justice. Uh, this concept of sort of properness and rightness in the relations between people and perhaps people and the world uh, and uh, is not really related to you know, written law and contract law and you know, other laws, you know, speeding tickets and things like that. Justice is, it occurs at a much uh, deeper and more sort of primal level. You know, you shouldn't speed because you know you might run over some child who's on a level crossing. You know, that's why you shouldn't go zooming around, especially places where you know, pedestrians are. So, thinking about that, I think probably me most people have thought about you know what do they really believe about sort of proper action and uh, proper action within a social sort of context. Um, the last one is wisdom, and of course we'd all like more of that. And uh, I think I've said before, wisdom comes from studying your mistakes. Uh, sticking to the facts is important if you're going to gain wisdom, not sort of justifying yourself and mealy-mouthing things, but really accepting the facts as they've emerged and your part of them and how you might act better in the future. Mistoicism is not really guilt-driven, it's, it's not a conscience process, it's, it's a wisdom applied process. You study your own actions, the actions of others, in order to act better in the future in order to understand the situation you're working better. So once you've had a look at the virtues and you think, yeah, they might work for me, 
Then I would uh, look at the dichotomy of control. This is the big one for Stoicism and probably what sets them apart from most other philosophies. So the dichotomy of control is the idea that you only control your own actions. You control probably also your own thoughts to a large degree. Not so much you control your feelings, but most of your thoughts and probably almost all your actions are controlled by you. And those are the things that you should focus on and you should evaluate from your moral perspective, from the four virtues, uh, and focus on that very, very closely. Uh, because the things that come back at you, the nature of the world, circumstances as they arise, they are of no moral significance to you. They do not reflect upon you and your quality of actions in the world. But they may lead you to think you might act differently next time. So that's the wisdom bit. So the dichotomy of control is immensely important and somewhat hard to take on board, just how hard it is. Uh, you might think about influence, I think we talked about that before, where, well, what if I could sort of do something that kind of partly determined the outcome of something that so might be a percentages game, it might completely control the outcome 12% of the time and 88% of the time you know, have no influence, or it might just nudge things in the right direction. The 12% influence might just make things a bit different. How do I account for that? Well, again, Stoicism would say, you decide what actions you're going to take. You're going to do this action in pursuit of this 12%. Once you've done the action, whatever happens isn't your business. You just evaluate it as it comes out. So that leads us on from the dichotomy of control. Essentially, I think what is the major thing that people write about in Stoic literature, which is kind of the stoic attitude, the attitudes that emerge out of those two major steps in your mind. And this is the idea of kind of leaning forward into the future, uh, but accepting everything that comes your way. So that is uh, amor fati, uh, to love your fate. Everything that happens to you, all these externally controlled or randomly occurring uh, events uh, of, that are of no significance to you morally, uh, you're encouraged to love, to love your life, this is your life, uh, and to cherish it and relish it uh, and make the most of it. Uh, so that is the attitude to the outside world that Stoicism brings. Uh, there is, and you may have heard another phrase from Marcus Aurelius, which seems to be a bit contradictory, uh, he who has courage despises the future. So what Marcus Aurelius is talking about there, and I think it reflects nicely with the um, a more fatty saying, is you, when you do things, or when you plan things and then exercise those plans, you're kind of attached to the outcomes you expect from those plans. So you are looking to the future to see the rewards of your plans coming to fruition. And from Marcus Aurelius's point of view and the point of view of most Stoics, there is no point in doing that. What comes back at you from your plans and schemes and actions and pursuit of those plans and schemes has nothing to do with you. And there's not much point sitting around waiting for glorious things to happen to get attached to the future. You don't own the future, it just happens. So you cast your plans to the wind essentially or I think it's been said in the 20th century, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men. You know, we are, many of our plans come to nothing. It's not a bad thing that we make plans, it's not a bad thing that we exercise them, but we shouldn't get too attached to them. So you might put that in another way to say that hope is not a stark virtue. <laughs> it is a theological virtue in Catholicism, I would say. There you go. But Stoics don't go around hoping a lot for things. They have intentions and actions and then they evaluate the outcomes and they see if it's worked or not and accumulate wisdom if it didn't work or maybe if it did work that also helps you gain some knowledge but usually most of your knowledge comes from your mistakes. So in a nutshell that is how to install stasis in your head. I think once you've thought about those things and tried to run your mind from that perspective I, what I would recommend would be reading Marcus Aurelius. He's, he's a delightful little author he covers off many of the things that I talk about in this channel from a very human perspective. Uh, and I think you know, many of us would love to have met Marcus Aurelius, although he was Emperor of Rome and 
maybe might not have been so accommodating. But anyway, he's gifted us with his meditations and I think we should make the most of that. Uh, so yes, yeah, Marcus Aurelius is perhaps something you might read and reread. He's, he's a great piece of literature and you might not need to read any other Stoic literature if you're simply intending to run uh, the Stoic way in your mind. So there you go. Uh, please remember, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, to like and subscribe. Uh, and we'll see you back in about a week's time with another video. Cheers.